just flown in. The guys are finishing up this uh, awesome setup where there are lots of different rooms. Just as everyone? Yeah. I mean, it's pretty chaotic, but it's going to look good eventually. We've been talking for a couple of months about having a space because there's quite a lot of guys living in California, and um, it's been it's been a big journey. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's pretty cool. Well, we're going to set up and workshop in here. Um, you know, work on some songs. It's pretty cool. Drum kit over here. I have no idea how it's going to sound. I'm sure it's going to be good. Quick question. Yeah. Do you think it's going to be ready in time? Well, it's meant to be ready now, so it's obviously not going to be ready in time. It's actually a miracle that we've got how much stuff done in Orange County. I mean, yeah, we put a studio together during the, the creation of the album, so. Is that a coffee you have in your head? I've always just loved that about our team, that like even when things kind of aren't going fully to the script, just how people jump on board and do what they can do to try to make things move a little bit smoother. And, and the result, I think, is just this excitement about it. The thing about recording these songs in the studio is that it allows for a whole other set of elements to be added in that you're not necessarily going to have when you're recording live. It's exciting to see the potential of that, you know, and I'm always up for that. I'm always up for the music. Cool. All right, well, in the name of Jesus, I anoint this room with oil and declare the blood of Jesus over every surface. Jesus, cleanse that it's a place where the Holy Spirit will be welcome and active in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, well, I was reading, as we do, um, in Ephesians chapter 5, but everything exposed by the light becomes visible, and everything that is illuminated becomes a light. Mm -hmm. This is why it is said, wake up sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. As we prepared to begin the pre-production process for the album, I kept praying about um, what I could bring to our, our team in that first prayer meeting that we had. That was the scripture that kept coming to me. We do pray that the Lord would shine on this project and make it visible to the people who need to see it, but we also pray that um, it's illuminated from within and that that's um, an invitation to people. I would never want to see our Hillsong Worship albums, our projects, our teams, our tours, for them to be visible but not be illuminated. Um, because there's no point in something being, being seen if it can't bring light in itself. So, <clears throat> shall we pray and then um, green light this thing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I've only got one. Oh, oh, Cuthbert, yeah. Cuthbert. It was just crackling like crazy just then. Let's just say that anything that could go wrong has successfully gone wrong. But sometimes miracles can be complex, you know? Uh, I'm the key person on it. Have we been here for nine hours? Uh, yeah, now yeah. I'm yeah. <laughs> getting through it. Blair, yeah. well, yeah, that's another song. Okay, cool. What's the song called? Simple See the Light. See the Light. Um, but, so with this track, we're going for Africa meets Seinfeld in Boston. We are making some real solid gold here. Oh, what did I just do? <laughs> Deleted the session. Well, it has been exciting because we've been making noise or music, as we like to call it. Morale is high, coffee intake is very high. Yeah, that's great. Good thing to end on. We have one vision as a church. We all unite around that vision to fulfill it in order to see the Great Commission fulfilled. I definitely believe that we have a mandate, an apostolic anointing to bring new songs to the global church. As a songwriter, I find that inspiring. I find that to be a responsibility. If that's true, that people will sing the songs that we're writing, then, then we gotta make sure that what we're singing is something that the church should be singing. 
So I have been talking with our senior pastors the past couple of days, and um, we have a name for this album that we're making. Wow, very cool. awesome. And we all feel like it is something that um, the Lord has just made really clear. I think probably one of the most depressing things ever was if um, all of this that, that, we're, that we're endeavoring to do and all of these songs and these albums, if it was just a human thing. Fortunately, that's not the case. <laughs> Fortunately, um, we serve a God who's really real and has a plan for all of this. He's so gracious that he allows us to partner with and engage in and enter into what he's doing. And I think that is one of the reasons that I'm full of anticipation for what this project is going to be because I can very honestly say to you that this has been a God thing. We started to notice these themes and these, um, these common threads, each with different aspects and different articulations of this message, but it seemed to be the same. And we were actually listening on the week prior to our Vision Sunday presentation at the beginning of the year. Revival is in the air, not just out there somewhere. No, it's here, it's tangible, it's real. I just sat there with the tears running down my face as I watched this presentation and at the core of all of it was everything that I had just heard in these songs that had come from our songwriters. Um, and one of the hallmarks of that presentation was the Lawrence Tribble poem, um, Awaken. One man awake awakens another, the second awakens his next door brother. The three awake can rouse a town by turning the whole place upside down. The many awake can cause such a fuss, it finally awakens the rest of us. One man up, with dawn in his eyes, surely then multiplies. There's a reason that the great revivals through the 1700s in Britain and America was called the Great Awakening, because awakening is, at its essence, revival. It's a reviving of the people of God. It's a renewing of the church. It's a waking up of people who have been asleep. And so we thought that if the United album's called People, well then the Hillsong Worship album has to be called Awake, because what's revival if it's not people awake? It just was a no-brainer for me that um, that the words from our church to the world this year would be revival is in the air, people awake. Awesome. And um, so I think as we're making awake, um, that it's good for us to keep in mind and to be awake ourselves to the places that these songs will go and the way that the church will be strengthened. Uh, we're hand I'm handing out the lyrics simply because um, the song itself melodically is extremely simple, so the momentum and the tension is built by the lyric. Are you ready for it? Yes. Should I say the chords? Yeah. So there's a lot of verses. It's, as you it's, can real, it's really built on tension and release this song. Yeah. So, um... Four? Oh. Yeah. King of Kings is a song that I'm I'm really excited about. During the first listening week, I didn't even bring it. We had so many great songs. It was it was incredible. God was speaking. Um, and then as the weeks rolled on, I kind of realised we didn't have a song that um, that focused on the gospel or the cross. And so I kind of said, Hey, look, me and Scotty and our friend Jason, we we have this song. I haven't played it to you before, but can we run it? I think sometimes there's songs that seem to have a kind of immediacy spiritually, and I think that's what happened with this. It was pretty emotional, actually, and, and, and powerful. I just need to do, like, one sob really quick, and then I can... I just need to get it out. <laughs> ah! <laughs> I've never heard a sob like that. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> Crazy as that may seem. Excellent theme. 
Yeah. Some of the songs that have ministered to me so deeply have been songs um, packed full of theology, where my spirit is absorbing the truths about who God is and confessing them, and in doing so, um, praise is released because I'm understanding more of who this God is that I'm worshiping. So it's important that we have songs of lament. It's important that we have songs of intercession. It's important that we have songs when we're pouring out our trouble before God. But it's also important that we have songs that exalt God and remember and emphasize His holiness. Yes, Jesus is my saviour. Yes, Jesus is my best friend. Um, yes, Jesus is my closest companion. But Jesus is the King of Kings. And we must never forget to revere Him and to treat Him with the holy awe that He deserves. I'm going to talk through the set for tonight for those who would like to, to know what the set is. I'm going to start with Let Go in the key of C that Aiden will lead. Um, new song, King of Kings, Brooke will lead that in the key of D, song six. We introduced it to our church for the first time at our colour conference, our women's conference back in March. And that was um, two, absolutely three, terrifying. <laughs> Oh, I'll start it's on this one. Can you tell him Chris and Eddie's about it? Go for it. Okay, sorry. We're there to, to serve the conference and to serve what God's doing at the conference. And so to bring a new song is a little bit risky because you obviously don't want to bring something that doesn't help what God's doing. There's nothing like his presence. Do you agree? Well, the Bible says it, so if you don't agree, you're probably wrong. Um, <clears throat> um, there's this scripture in 1 Samuel chapter 5. <clears throat> it's kind of obscure, but come on the journey with me for a second. It says, after the Philistines had captured the Ark of God. Now, the Ark of God was symbolic of the presence of God in Israel. The symbolic of the presence of God in Israel. Symbolic of the presence of God. I didn't stutter. I just wanted you to get it. After the Philistines had captured the Ark of God, they took it from Ebenezer to Ashdod, and then they carried the Ark into Dagon's temple and set it beside Dagon. Now, back in this day, Dagon was the principal deity of the Philistines. It was the idol that they worshiped and believed was God. They set the Ark of God, the presence of God beside Dagon. And when the people of Ashdod rose early the next day, there was Dagon fallen on his face on the ground before the Ark of the Lord. So but because they're humans, they're people and they're a bit stupid, they took Dagon and put him back in this place. But the following morning when they rose, there was Dagon fallen on his face on the ground before the ark of the Lord. His head and his hands had been broken off and were lying on the threshold and only his body remained. And the truth is that every authority throughout human history that would set itself up in society as something to be idolized or worshiped, all of those things must fall in the presence of our God. They must fall. So tonight as we worship, I just felt the need to keep praising and keep saying, praise God, praise the Father, praise the Son, and praise the Holy Spirit, because as we lift Him up and as we magnify Him, as we worship Him in this place and in His presence fills our lives, every other thing that would set itself up must fall. In Jesus' name. Are you up for a new song tonight? This will be the third time we've ever even run it through. Three. 
Hi, welcome to the studio. This is the drum room. Wait. So now for something completely different. It's the drum room, otherwise known as the waffle room. I feel like every time we break new ground and we're doing a lot of really good stuff, something really bad always happens. Dan McMurray was working pretty hard. There's like a couple songs that we were bouncing around between this, the smaller room and then like the big room out there. We were high-fiving, we went and got Indian food, we like came back and then um, like just the worst storm hit. There was just buckets of water just coming through the roof and like all the, the tiles had cracked and um, it was just an absolute disaster. Still don't have any light to the studio. It's been uh, very, well, I guess the stuff works, can't complain, right? Um, yeah, so like we have a crazy storm and the studio doesn't work, like we just kind of shift gears and sometimes you find gold in that. We just kind of have to use that as part of the fun, I guess. All right, guys, let's go. Go get it. He loves it, I wash shorts. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Okay. Praise God. Ah. Hey, uh, Jasmine, we're going to have to go back in and get that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. You know, no big deal. It's kind of nice to warm up. You just got to make sure you don't smash it. The ocean. Sorry, Paul gave me a fuss. <laughs> Action shot. <laughs> Action shot. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I am so in. Yeah. 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 Day 723. How's it going? Is it Yes. Let's do it. Let's get off our shoulders. Man in the pool. Yes. <laughs> 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 I'm just going to run a couple of times alive. Let's try it. Let's, Let's go to the original. Let's leave it again. All right. Just go one more. Come find the freedom you were born for. Pretty awesome. <laughs> what a vibe. So good. Well, let's get the while I'm dying. Let's get the the bridge thing. <laughs>
How are we doing, church? Do you want to sing a new song? So good. Well, um, before we do, before we do, I want to read the scripture that inspired this next song. Where were you when I laid the earth's foundation? Tell me if you understand who marked off its dimensions. Surely you know who stretched a measuring line across it. On what were its footings set? Or who laid its cornerstone? While the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted for joy. Crazy thing about God is that, yes, He does all of that, but He also cares about the little things. He cares about you, He cares about me. And um, I don't know, I, feel, I just pray that as, this, as we sing this song that you'd be reminded that, yes, God is incredible and He's doing unbelievable things, but right now He cares about this moment. Amen? Come on, there's no one like God. Amen? Amen. God kind of came with this idea, which, which is like, you know, the epicness of God. He played me kind of the verse of no one but you. And we're like, I feel like that's pretty cool. Like, let's just be on that for a second. And so then, I guess within like 15 minutes, we pretty much had the entire song fleshed out. We're like, I think this kind of works. The concept, the theme was really strong. And that was, to me, a good indicator like that there's something here. Brooke came in the room and she's like, okay, cool. That's awesome. Do you want to run it live? Speaking to my soul. I'm like playing the keyboard, like I've just learned this song. Literally half an hour ago, I never had heard of it. So in the room, all the bands there, and I kind of play a little bit of it for them, and then we're like, okay, let's do it. Literally, it was like, for me, one of the most amazing, like, workshopping of a song, or the introduction of a song that I've ever been a part of. We kind of did the whole song, we went for like a while, like doing the bridge a bunch. And then we kind of dropped down and then Brooke started singing. And it was like, where is she going? What you heard was the choir was coming out of all the big bridges, so big bridges, big instrumental, and then you finish on a big outro, but you have the choir singing a really simple part that's the chorus. We just went with it and it was like, oh, Jesus is insane. I would love every time to write a song and feel like that moment. That song is pretty much as it was when we workshopped it and it kind of came together and then, you know, Brooke started singing the, the back half and um, I like that something just happened in the room and we were like, well, like, we don't want to mess with that. We'll just keep it as is, you know. I could listen to Aiden sing all day, like, cause I think he's um, a really awesome singer. Make sure everything's good. Uh, yeah, do you want to pray? Jesus, thank you for Aiden. Um, thank you for um, Aiden and Scotty and the song. So we pray, yeah, just your strength, your grace. Thank you for your anointing, Lord God. Thank you that he's a man of God. Thank you that you're with him and him, for him and through him in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 It's going to be awesome. Thank you. I'm excited. You know, if there's no one like God, then what would our response be to that? We're here on this earth in some, in some crazy huge universe, <laughs> but the God of all of it, care so deeply about the desires of our heart. And I think worship is probably the most powerful thing that we have. It's actually what we were born to do. And I think God put us on this earth to worship Him.
So Hillsong Worship plays right into the hands of what Hillsong Church is doing. And it comes out of the life of our church. It comes out of Sunday after Sunday, our teams get up, they lead our church in worship. It's not something separate that sits over here that gets created in a studio separate to our church. It actually is for the people of our church, people that we know by name, the people that we love. Even though this is a studio album, this sounds more like a Hillsong Worship album and a Hillsong Church album than, than ever before. We're the church not just when we're together singing live in a room, but we're the church at all times. So one of the ways that we achieved the sound was using our choir um, in a really specific way in some really particular moments. We'll do the first half, which is the first two stanzas. The first stanza is going to be just super breathy, like barely a whisper. Okay, okay, everyone. Like a kitten, a kitten who's landing on a like a very soft rug. <laughs> Some of these people um, I've known for 15 years now and um, they have walked through hell and back but they turn up every Sunday and they're faithful in our team and I think not just having their voices on their album but their experience, that's part of what makes Hillsong Worship Hillsong Worship and that is the sound of our house. They sound so beautiful. I'm getting very emotional. Good. There's a lot of stuff on the new album that I listen to and I think, wow, that's so fascinating. Like, it's interesting and a lot of it is just that Brooke pushed for certain things to happen. There's a lot more choir on the album than I would have expected to put on there. I think it's come out really good. Thank you. It sounds amazing. And it has been a dream. Oh, wow. Yeah. I still love you. Brooke got a bunch of us worship leaders in, and she was calling it the worship leader choir. So we were like, oh yeah, cool, we're just gonna come in and stand in front of a few mics. Um, thank you everyone for coming. And being part of Woo! She goes, okay, so this is like not a usual choir recording, as you can probably already tell. We thought, let's get some of our worship leaders praying over the people who are listening to the album, praying over the church, praying for pastors, praying for worship teams, praying for the poor, praying for the suffering. We got them into the studio, and that's something that forms the heart and the meat of the sound. And you might not be able to hear it with your ears, but I believe people would be able to sense it with their spirits. Why I'm really excited about this afternoon and being with you guys is um, just like what I wrote on that email is for you to bring um, not just your voices and your gift but the spiritual authority that you have as leaders within our house and to really capture that as part of this project I think is really vital. We really um, value what each of you bring and are excited for your voices and your authority and your leadership to be felt um, in this and um, yeah so that's what we're going to do this afternoon. Today, Lord, we want to praise you and we want and we want to lift up um, your name. We want to we want to worship who you are. And Lord God, we pray that, that as we do so, um, that you would mark whatever this is, God, with your with your presence, um, with your Holy Spirit. And, and Lord, we we pray that you would anoint us to minister to people. We do all of this uh, for the glory of your name, Jesus. Amen. 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 We need you this morning. We call upon your name, Lord Jesus. We call upon your holy name, Lord. Your merciful name, Lord God. I just remember praying so passionately that I forgot I was in a room. As uncommon as it might be, it probably makes the most sense. The more we can connect people to God through what we're doing, you know, it is worship. I think it was significant because when you, you know, that battle that it talks about in Chronicles, it was the worship team that was on the front line. It's like, yeah, we're ready. We're ready to go to battle.
And the result is that when people put on the album for the first time, they're going to be washed in, in, in prayer and washed in people praying and interceding for them. And they're going to they're gonna hear it, not necessarily so overtly, but they'll hear the bubbling texture of the people of God interceding for each other. So it's pretty cool, yeah. My ultimate hope is that the songs would firstly speak to people and people would get a revelation of God. I think it comes from a, an amazing bunch of people who have like a real faith in God. And so I think there's a prophetic edge on this and I'm believing that we'll be just saturated in the presence of God. My prayer and my hope that I know it's the same for everybody else who's involved is that this would, again, go to new places, do things that we haven't done before, but also just inspire unity again. That's always our prayer, but I feel like right now more than ever we need to be united, we need to not be divided. So our hope for the album for church is that it equips them, is that it blesses them every Sunday and helps them bless their people and provide an environment where people can encounter God. That's why, that's why we exist, that's why we do this, yeah. My hope is that, that they'd be gifts to worship leaders and to church communities right around the world. And I think that in doing that, we do what Jesus said that he was doing, and that is building this church. See the Light uh, is a song that we started writing actually in a hotel room. We had just this little corner of the hotel room set up, started sort of playing this little thing, and we ended up just knocking that song out. It's hard not to make it feel, I don't want it to be Gritty. Yeah. Well, I was dead. Like, I like that. That's good, but it works to do them different. We started writing uh, around Galatians 2.20, the no longer I who live, but now Christ who lives in me. There's this sense that that we've been brought awake from, from slumber, that we've, we've been brought to life from death. I love that. That felt better. That's good, eh? Mm -hmm. We were never designed to live any other way. We were only designed to kind of live in connection with Christ. Are you ready to learn a new song? It's always a dangerous question, but I'm going to assume the answer is yes. No longer I do live, now Jesus lives in me. I think in lots of ways it was designed to be in every context, you know, and it's just really simple. Not every environment, not every service has like a full band. Sometimes it is just someone leading worship on a guitar. And I think, you know, the song works like that. See the Light, like they want it to be kind of high energy, but it kind of had this sort of country swing to it. And Brooke said, like, what if we just have a beatbox starting it, you know? I just, I just could not get my head know, around yeah. it. Yeah, I know Mikey is very tentative about it. I'm so dying to my husband. The idea that is, is that it's not very prominent, but it's a texture, you know, and then it would be layered and we would do things to it. It would sound different. So this is a Ben and Ruben number. Um, and... She's like, okay, there's this praise song. You're going to hear some really, like, bad beatboxing at the beginning. Um, but just go with it. But we might even get you guys doing some beatboxing and we'll choose the best one. <laughs> so as soon as we all started beatboxing, all I looked across and I just saw Hannah go red. Just red, red, red. <laughs> and then I got sent the song and they said, oh, we want you to come in and do a BV part on it. And it wasn't until like three weeks after I'd recorded it that Brooke was like, oh, I'm so glad you're leading that song on the album. <laughs> Night in the cross. Often we think about the suffering and the sacrifice and surrender and the worship, but joy is equally as powerful and celebration is equally as powerful because they are at the heart of who we are as Christian people. My belief is that the best kind of life anyone can live is a life that is reconciled with God. And so I think the fact that we've been brought back to life, that we, we see that light, that it is an incredibly hopeful picture. That's really what we get saved into, is this life in Christ, this life in connection with God. And so less of me is a good thing because more of Christ means more full life.
Jesus. I said, for I was dead in sin, but I woke up to see the man go. listening party with a number of our team. And it was actually like a really special morning. There's so many different roles and so many people that carry a project like this. You know, you've got a team in a studio trying to create music, and then you've got this incredible team of people like in translations and um, distribution and whatever that are, that are all doing their best to, to carry this message. And, um, I love I love the synergy of that. Often revival and awakenings are seen as being interchangeable in the church and we think we can substitute one for another. And the thing that I love is that I was reading this when it said revival comes first and then awakening. And awakening is actually yeah. where culture responds and changes to the power of Jesus Christ at work. Like, so revival yeah. is the church coming alive. Awakening is actually way wider than the church. We're actually created for this. We're created to worship and our minds can go to a million different places and we can get caught up on yeah. a thousand different things. But the truth is at the core of our being, the way we are wired and created to function in this life is first to worship yeah. and to bring our praise before God. When we first started listening to songs, I think that was one of the things that captivated me about those, those first group of songs is they felt so happy. And um, and I love that. I think that there's this if we're talking about revival, we're talking about being awake. Yeah. That the, the, the actual tone and the colour of the album feels really bright and it feels um, airy and spacious. And, you know, what I love about this album, it's so well produced and there's great church songs, but it's like the word that keeps coming up in my heart and my head is like, this is so uncommon. And then even listening back to some of the songs, I'm just like, this is going to be special. You can just tell. And I've just been so pumped to just play my, my little part. I cannot wait to introduce these songs to the church because they are going to love them. It's going to be a song and season. It'll build faith. I think it'll help encourage them to praise more. We might just pray together and trust God that um, spiritual awakening would come from this project, from everything that we put our hands to. Lord, as this project goes out with the brand Awake Over It, the name Awake Over It, that it would just do that in the church, that it truly would awaken Christians, that we would have new ways of speaking, that, that the lights would come on song after song after song. And we pray, Lord God, as these sound waves move into the ears, into the spirit, into their hearts, Lord God, that there would be a transformative power attached. This is all about the one, this is all about the one person awakening to your Holy Spirit, to your guidance, to your love into your grace and as those ones come together God that your church would move like a mighty yes. force through this earth. this is revival yeah. this is part of your redemptive story so again Lord we just want to commit every song yes. yeah, and that we would hear testimonies that glorify your name because of a bunch of average and ordinary people who have decided to commit their lives into gifting and offering worship to the church to sing unto you Lord God Amen. Amen. Every album actually attaches itself to people's current realities and whether they're going through pain or triumph, somehow songs become the soundtrack of their faith. 
I love the human element of these songs. I love what they end up doing, where they land in people's lives. And so that is what I most look forward to. I go, God, what are you going to do with these songs? Who are they going to impact? And what stories are going to come back? Sometimes, I don't know if you've ever had those times in worship where you can almost feel it change and you feel the shift when God manifests himself in a way. What invites that is always faith. Um, and it's always when people are praying. When we wake up on the inside and sing, it invites the presence of God. There is a sound I love to hear. It's the sound of the Savior's robe as he walks into the room where people pray. Where we hear praises, he hears faith. These songs are actually calls to awaken the church. It is at the heart of the Christian message that we would come alive to the things of God, that we would wake up, that our ears would be open to hear his voice. He is speaking and he continues to speak and to challenge us to hear and then speak what we've heard. I think that's a challenge for everybody. What parts of my life haven't I allowed the presence of God to go deep in? You know, am I holding back? Coming awake implies that there's, there's some sort of slumber and the life that God offers is a life that is a full life. And so we come awake to the possibility of eternity with God. We spend so much time dreaming about what we hope the church will become. And unless we awaken, those dreams will never come to pass. I think the church has to actually wake up and just start doing what we know to do. Look outside of our four walls and go to where people are hurting most, where the broken are. That is what Jesus did. It's now more than ever that we as Christians need to be actively praying. We need to be actively helping people. We need to be actively loving our neighbours. Our hope as believers is not just coming awake at some point in the future, but it's a, it's a right now, it's an awareness of who God is and what He's doing right now on the planet and that we get to be a part of that. An awake church isn't great attendance or great events or conferences or albums, it's a church that cares about what Jesus cares about. I think God cares about wanting to have a relationship with people. So I, I feel like the more we seek God and what He wants, we'll always find people at the end of that. In order for a revival to happen, each individual has to awaken to the presence of God and the things of God in their own life. And as one person awakes, and as a community awakens, and as a nation awakens, and as the world awakens, then I think we will see the lost come home and that God's glorified. Like that is the end of everything, that He receives the worship that He is worthy of. Um, I hope that this album changes people's lives. Yeah, that's uh, my, my and our sincere hope, is that it changes people's lives, is that people find Jesus and find Him for real. Yeah.